nuclear proliferation. That is probably the most dangerous thing facing mankind. And another pandemic. We, in my view, we were kind of lucky in this pandemic. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is CEO of the largest investment bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon's leadership of J.P. Morgan Chase has often brought a sense of stability to roiling financial markets. But when he looks at the conflicts in Gaza, Ukraine, and elsewhere, combined with inflation and rising interest, rates at home, he sees ominous warning signs. Subscribe now hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. You talked about climate change being uh, super important, yep. uh, one of the biggest, most dangerous issues. Uh, JP Morgan is a member of the UN's Net Zero Alliance, yeah. right? Which means that you're transitioning your portfolio. The pledge is to transition the investment por portfolio to net zero GHG emissions by 2050. Yeah. The state of Texas... It's not a said, pledge. It's a, it's a target, but yeah. It's a target. Yeah. The state of Texas says, well, if you're going to do that, given that we like oil, we don't want to do business with you. Yeah. What do you do about that? It's, I don't worry about it, okay? We do, we're the, well, you are worried about it because we, everybody's trying to figure out what to do. No, because we are honest and direct, and we deal with people with the biggest oil and gas financial in the world. So I went to Texas, I went on TV, and I told them, I don't understand this, Colleen. We finance more oil and gas companies in the world than just about anybody else, which I'm proud of. The best companies, the cleanest companies, they're reducing the oil and gas, they're reducing the methane. They will be the biggest part of the transition, whether you think that or not. You know, and so we look at facts and detail analysis. And yes, we're also one of the biggest green financiers in the world. Solar, wind, uh, uh, are, are all the R&D taking place. And so we just do our jobs. And that's, that I don't think will happen. But if it does happen, so be it. We can't do municipal bonds in Texas. There will be consequences to Texas because we bank their cities, schools, states, hospitals, companies, 30,000 employees. And this time I would punch back. Okay? So... We don't have to put all our employees there. I, I, just, I find it ridiculous. That, so I'm not getting involved in the politics. If you ask me about politics I'll, or policy, I'll tell you what I think. So I don't know exactly why they're upset with us, and they'll probably reconsider that at one point. Question about speech that's taking place on campuses these days as it relates uh, in large part uh, to what's happened in Israel, the anti-Semitism, uh, Islamophobia, and the like. Uh, Bill Ackman, I believe, is here. I see Bill here. and He's been very outspoken uh, on this issue about hiring. Yeah. Um, about folks who signed some of these uh, these these pledges uh, against Israel, uh, calling for genocide to the Jews and all sorts of things. Is that going to factor into your hiring? So you this is a, if if there's an individual in front of me and I can look at all these things, what they did and how they did it, when they did it and stuff like that, it might. But it's not a binary thing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you yes or no. You know, and I just I think it's unfair to the individual and. So there's no, I don't have a direct answer to that. Do I like bigots and anti-Semites? Absolutely not. Would I hire a true bigot of some sort? Probably not. But that's pretty basic. That was true before. We're going to have uh, Elon Musk here this afternoon. What do you think of him? <laughs> I, I, I haven't read that book yet. I don't know if Walter's here. Uh, I mean, obviously a brilliant human being and making unbelievable contributions to mankind, but he's, you know, comes with pluses and minuses, and he's not particularly fond of me because we've had a few commercial disputes. You have a, so, a big lawsuit going on with him. It's a small lawsuit. <laughs> and we, we think we're owed money in something, and they say no, and it's in court, and we'll win. Uh, but uh, you made a comment, and I think maybe this will help everything, or help us at least set the table. You said, this may be the most dangerous time the world has seen in decades. Right. It doesn't feel that way in some ways uh, when you walk around on the street, but why do you think it's the most dangerous time? So, uh, first of all, again, welcome everybody. Uh, you know, if you look at history and you open a newspaper of any month, of any year, you know, of course there's always tough stuff going on, wars and depressions and recessions. And, but if you look at this time, and what's happening in Ukraine, a 600-mile front, a free and democratic European nation, 600,000 casualties, huge humanitarian crisis, NATO on the border of NATO, nuclear blackmail, uh, and it's affecting, you know, all oil and gas 
migration, food costs, and all international military and economic relationships. That's pretty tough. And that was before the terrorist attack in Israel. And so I look at those things as kind of, it's dangerous. And, you know, we need, we need to get through it. Now, hopefully, it'll all go away. But if you look at the history of battles like this, they're unpredictable. You don't know the full effect. And so, you know, and I've spoken to a lot of people. I think you've talked to Condi Rice and Bob Gates and some of the military folks. They would say the same thing. This is really complex, and obviously it's affecting America and China. As a result of this, though, yep. what do you do about it? Meaning, we can all sit and say that this may be one of the most dangerous times in the world, but how are you, how are you changing what you're doing as a function of it? Well, if you're talking about the company, you're talking about the nation. So I think as a nation... Let's go I, both. But this is my own personal view. We better have the best military in the world, bar none. There is no replacement for that. I think we learned a lesson, got a little complacent, which happens in companies, it happens in countries, but we should not be complacent. The world is always a dangerous place. We just forgot. Number two, you know, uh, I think oil and gas can be explosive, ex explosive, expensive, and it hurts poor nations and poor people. We need to be very thoughtful about it. I think this is about keeping the Western world together. So the Western world, think of military and economic, and, you know, it needs American leadership, not rude, arrogant American leadership, but American leadership to make sure this world stays together. And that affects trade. That affects all economic relations, and you know, we have to do a good job at that. I don't want the book written in 50 years saying how the West lost. Okay? And so that's what it's going to take, and hopefully we'll have that. How do you handicap this, though? Because it's one thing to say, look, this may be one of the most dangerous times in the world, but is that a 10% chance that, it's, that this is the most dangerous time? What, how, do you, how do you think about that? And it's also very hard to bet on the end of the world. Yeah, I'm not betting on anything. So when you, we do risk management, we don't look at risk management saying, well, we don't think it's going to happen, or we do look at percentages. Like, but what's the range of potential outcomes? But my view is when you have this kind of risk, you better deal with it very seriously because the chance of something going wrong is high, and if it goes wrong, the, the cost of that will be enormous. So that's, that's just how I look at it. And so you know, I think every citizen of the world, the democratic world, should be looking at it saying, what can we do to do a better job? And the first thing is the military side. You know, uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, we don't win from a position of weakness. You, you avoid war from a position of strength. We have to do that. And I think we should be supporting free enterprise. As a nation, you know, Bob Gates wrote a book, which is brilliant, but there's a first chapter of a book called Exercise of Power's Symphony of Power. And he talks about how we overused and misused sometimes our military muscle, but underused development finance, the communications like the benefits of being free and freedom of speech and freedom of religion and freedom of enterprise, uh, uh, communications about that, uh, economic relationships, diplomacy. So I travel around the world. You know, America is absent in some places. The Chinese now are all over Latin America, all over Africa. I'm not against them. I'm simply saying we need to do a better job at that. And if you look at our development finance and some of our stuff, those efforts have been coming down for years. And so we, we need to thoughtfully and strategically handle that problem. Just, just walk yeah. through the permutations, though, if you could. <clears throat> Meaning, if this is the most dangerous time, how does it metastasize? You look at what's happening in Israel. We're going to talk to the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, in just a little bit. We're having the president of, uh, of Taiwan uh, on the screen in just a little bit. I, you just mentioned China and the Middle East yeah. as examples. What do you think could happen? Yeah, well, I already mentioned nuclear blackmail, so mankind faces some huge risks. There are three I'm going to mention, okay? One is obviously these wars, which is not one of those three, but nuclear proliferation. That is probably the most dangerous thing facing mankind. Climate change, which we need a lot of work to do, and we kind of don't really have to act together on that if you think about good policy, and another pandemic. We, I'm not, in my view, we were kind of lucky in this pandemic. You know, it, it wasn't as deadly as a smallpox, and it didn't kill children. And so we need to get our act together to get those things done. Obviously, wars are unpredictable. And, you know, what's going on in the Middle East is unpredictable there. What's going on in, you know, hopefully these wars will end up, you know, in armistice, in peace. That's good for Ukraine and Israel. Uh, but you can't count on that happening. And certainly you can't count on it happening before we meet again in a year from now. Let me ask you about the role of business in the, on the, in the geopolitical sphere. You do a lot of business in China. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a report that you were going to underwrite uh, the Xi'an uh, IPO. Yep. You do business with ByteDance, yep. uh, which happens to be the owner of TikTok, yep. uh, a business that a lot of people think is fundamentally a, a national security threat to the United States. You know, how, how do you justify that? I was in China, and you know, of course, there's people afraid about you being pro-China and stuff like that. 
and I said, the Chinese know one thing about me. I'm red-blooded, full-throated, free market, pro-capitalist, pro-American. And I salute what the American government does. And we're, we're talking to them all the time about what is the right way to deal with national security. You know, it's not Xi'an. Now, that isn't the issue about national security. But, you know, when the government comes up with what they want to do, I'm going to salute. And that's what J.P. Moore is going to do. But in the meantime, it's a very complicated subject. So every, every nation has national security interests. You know, ours is semiconductors and, and uh, you know, maybe some data. But, you know, for Europe, it's energy. They are completely reliant on outside parties for their energy. You know, I- even for China, they import, I think, 9 or 10 million barrels of oil a day. So every country is going to be looking at its own national security interests. And so the complexity of China, we'll, we'll work that. We want, to be part, we, we, we want to be at the table and help figure out, and I think the government is talking about the right way, narrow garden, high walls, semiconductors, you know, penis, 100% it, of it, our penicillin, 100% of our pharmaceutical parts come from there. Obviously, we should fix that. So is there any part of you that says, for example, doing business with ByteDance, with TikTok? We're going to have Kevin McCarthy on. He's not a fan, as you know, of TikTok. There are a number of states uh, that are trying to ban TikTok. It's, I'm not going to go through it here, and I'm not going to talk about clients. You can imagine the due diligence and work we do to figure out what the truth is about those things. If some of those people are doing things that we think are truly bad, we would not bank them. And, of course, the American government will have a point of view on that, and we'll engage in those conversations, too. Let me ask you about... Uh... But, but, I, but I also think, I think engagement is good. I'm not afraid of China. Okay, we have all the food, war, and energy. We have the Atlantic and the Pacific. We, are, we are, have not pissed off our neighbors. We've got a great relationship with Mexico and Canada. You know, they have a very complex neighborhood. They've done a pretty good job angering their, all the people around them. Okay, and that's, and we're all remilitarizing. Japan, the Koreas, Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. And whatever you think about Russia, they're not great friends. You know, like, in, like a mere 30 or 40 years ago, there were armies on both sides between Russia and China. So, and they have to import 10 million barrels of oil a day. They've got terrible demographics. So I'm not afraid of China. I think we should engage exactly the way the administration is doing it today. And I think it's good for an American bank to be there to help American, you know, multinationals around the world and China with their own development if it makes sense. If for some reason the American government says, nope, can't do that anymore, then so be it. Okay, so but what is that risk? I don't set foreign policy for the United right, States. But, but what is that risk, and how do you think about that risk? And the reason I ask the question is we have a number of businesses. Today we're going to talk to Bob Iger. He's got a big business in, in China as well. And to the extent you think that the war in Ukraine uh, could have been a dress rehearsal for what would happen if there was a takeover of Taiwan, maybe you don't think it's a, a dress rehearsal. But the reason I mention it is if, in fact, that were to happen, if you remember, most U.S. businesses left Russia. Now, they could do that economically. It was not the hardest thing to do. It would be much harder for American businesses, for, I imagine you, for a Disney, for an Apple, for a Nike, to leave China. If the American government makes me leave China, I'm leaving China. Okay? It doesn't matter what I think or don't think. But I think you're, if, if there's a war in Taiwan, you can take all bets off. That, that will be a major depression, a major problem. America will be better off than China. You know, so, you know, and it, it would be really tough. No one thinks that's going to happen. It may happen. So as a risk manager, J.P. Morgan can handle that. But that would be really bad for the world and really bad for China, really bad for the people of China. So I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, I, you can't say it won't. So you, you know, have to be prepared for it. And, uh, but I think the best thing to do is to help the American government figure out what we need to do to protect our national security, protect our allies, keep the Western alliances together, and make it clear to people who are adversaries or potential adversaries what the cost to them will be of bad actions. That's what we should do. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Jamie Dimon. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.